Welcome to the Howdy Boomy Show. It's Thursday, a beautiful day in October, and I, as many of you probably did also, heard in awe and witnessed the videotape in awe of a Pop Warner kid, football player, running to his mother's car, getting a pistol and shooting some fellow players. Now, Pop Warner football is for kids. Kids going to the mother's car and shooting other kids. What the hell has the world come to? Morgan State University. Five students shot. Malls. You cannot be unaccompanied under 18 at a mall here now past 5 o'clock in the afternoon because of gangs, kids with guns. And you wonder, how did this happen? And I had to not laugh, but I felt a little bit vindicated when Tim Brown, who is a candidate on the Republican side for the nomination to run for President of the United States, which we know he won't get, but he's a black individual. And he echoed something that I said months ago on this podcast. On November 22, 1963, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. That day changed the world. How did it affect black Americans today? Well, his successor was Lyndon Baines Johnson, a Democratic gentleman from Texas, who was Speaker of the House once. He wielded a lot of weight. And JFK wanted the Southern vote. And he figured, got a good old Southern boy here, he'll help you get it. So JFK is assassinated. And during the JFK administration, remember James Meredith not being admitted to the University of Alabama, Nicholas Katzenbach, the Attorney General for the Kennedy administration, confronting George Wallace at the steps of the university, allowing Mr. Meredith to pass. JFK was for minorities, and he always was. So now here is Lyndon Baines Johnson, a good old Southern boy, and we know what they thought about minorities. He has to prove that he is just as able to get the black community behind him as JFK was. It's not easy. So what did he do? He passed the Great Society. And unfortunately, part of that bill paid extra money to black families, poor families, if they had kids. Now my wife was in the, uh, worked in the admissions office of a hospital. And let me tell you exactly what happened. A black girl, girls, teenagers, would come in pregnant with a guy and they would apply to get into the hospital. No one was going on. They didn't have any money, insurance, la da 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 da. And usually 20 out of 25 times, the boy would get up and say, hey, I'm out of here. I'm not the father of this kid. I got to, she just grabbed me over here to bring me in. What happened was, rather than have a child, because you want a child, rather than have a child, this is my son, this is my daughter, black females, black males, black organizations, whatever you want to call them, were having kids because it meant an extra 92 bucks a month, which maybe now is 500, I have no idea. But they were having kids, not as having children, but as additional money coming into the household. What do you think that does to a black family? We don't need males anymore. All we need is a kid, and we're gonna get $92 a month extra. That began the destruction of the black family in America. Fathers were no longer needed. Watching Fox News three weeks ago, 
on a Sunday interviewing a black gentleman who was in a neighborhood where there were 30 shootings that weekend in Chicago. And he said that 80% of the families in that neighborhood don't have a father. 80%. And it can be all traced back to November 22, 1963, when JFK was assassinated. And that began the process of beginning to destroy the black family by throwing money at families for having kids without fathers. And today we see the results of that. No matter what you thought of Andrew Cuomo and one of his advertisements in running for governor, he stated a fact that would cure 99% of the ills in the black community. In the country, everything begins at the kitchen table. What does the kitchen table in a black family look like now? That's what we should strive to bring up. Fatherhood. Don't kneel on the sideline in NFL games. Don't scream about white policemen attacking black criminals. Fatherhood. I wish someone would go on that. Deion Sanders is doing a great job in Colorado. My impression with him, he's a great father. LeBron James is one of the best basketball players that ever lived. My impression of him, he's a great father. Role models. That's what we should be doing. Fatherhood in the black community. I hope you have a great day. Tomorrow is our shift head of the week, and boy, there, there's some candidates, but I got one guy that you all recognize. Watch the Howdy Boomy podcast on the Howdy Boomy channel on YouTube. I'll see you tomorrow, shift head of the week. God bless you. God bless America.